Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to do some router work on this overlarged dog paw print with the words who rescued who. Now as always for me, we've placed our template on this recycled pine. This is the base of a wardrobe, so it's nice and thick. I would say that's a good inch thick, is that? Now originally I wanted to scroll saw this out, scroll saw around all the letters, put a black back underneath, and then stick those back in. But I've got my doubts about this pine stuff for these thin letters. We'll leave that for another day because we will save the template and you never know it might make a reappearance in a video further down the line. But for today we're just going to route it out so nice and easy. We literally route out round all the black sections removing all that we see in black leaving the lettering behind obviously with the pine and then we eventually we'll get a scroll saw cut it all out shape it nicely a little bit of shaping on this we'll have to go delicate these are awfully thin and i do have my concerns when we actually go to either side with the cnc bit these might just pop off so it might have a slight modification we'll see as we go along if you don't try these things we'll never know okay the template's down as always bit of painter's tape i put my carbon paper underneath Draw around it all, and there we go. We're, we're all good to go. Just pull that off there. And you can use that again. Like I say, it might be scroll saw pattern next time. Now, place, place your print out, shall I say. Notice I've got three nasty knots on this one. So I've juggled it about a bit, and those three nasty knots are all inside the routed out area. So once we've routed that out, we are going to fill this in with resin and we'll cover all those up and I won't tell anybody if you don't. So that's it, we have templates done. As always for me, I'm going to use my little CNC bits. We don't have to go too deep today, remember, we are filling this in with resin. So why go too deep and just going to cost you more with resin. So a couple of mil will be ample enough just so we can see these letters will be raised up on a previous project, I did sand it all down afterwards and make it flush. But I want these letters to stand out. So it might be three mil, maybe four. We'll see how we go on once we start cutting. As always, for my CNC bits, a nice new one to start us off with today. This is a 15 degree, so it's quite a point on it. Because remember, we're going to fill with resin, so we don't want too fancy a degree with the slopes to the sides and stuff like that. So a 3.175 millimeter CNC bit. That literally just slots into your collet, 6.35 millimeter, like so. Now that will pop into your router, no problem. We'll set it to a knife depth that we need. My two little devices, this stepping down mechanism. So you'll set the router mechanism, should I say, this step down piece of wood. So you can see the depth there. That's one. Would two be deep enough? Three is far too deep, four too deep again. So that's a little idea, they come in handy. There is proper depth guard, uh, gauges you can purchase if you want to be technical. Or a good old classic piece of wood like that. Set it to one you like, mark it off, and you know you've got the same depth for your project. Once we've got wrong, excuse me. Once we've gone around all the lettering with our CNC bit, we'll pop in one of our end milling bits. Now there is bigger bits out there. I've got a case full of bigger bits. But I just prefer to use these little guys. We can get one that fits into those little spaces. Let's say a green one. Obviously we've got to get inside the letter E and stuff. And that will slot into your same adapter. So throw that out. Pop that in. Push it up to that little barrier. Like so. Set the same depth to what you've already routed out a little bit. Or to one of your gauges. And we're good to go. Okay, let's pop our CNC bit into the router. And we'll start routing this one out.
Right, we've made it all the way round with our CNC bits. Very powdery this wood. It's recycled pine as you can see. And a lot of it is still compacted into the actual cutout. That's only because we're using a 15 degree CNC bit. And you can always see it's just like a pin look. So it's very, very, very narrow and very pointed. So there's not a lot of space for that sawdust to get out. But that's that'll soon be gone once we go over with our other bits. Now on the bigger areas like this, we will get away with some of these straight flush bits. They're quite big pieces, these double-sided blades and what have you. Straight quarter-inch shaft, they'll pop straight into the router. We'll get away with those on these bigger areas. I certainly wouldn't use these inside here, especially with these thin lines. That will snap that off no problem whatsoever. So to play safe, as always for me, I'll use my end milling bits. We'll find one that fits into our smallest areas. So we know that fits in there. We'll get it up into there. So we'll go for this green one. And that's a simple case of removing the CNC bit. Like I say, we slide that back into there like so. Up to that little barrier. Pop that in. We'll set it to one of our depths. You go inside there if you wanted to. Or inside there. Then we know we're at the right depth. And we'll start removing all this backing piece. And then once we've done that, I will throw on one of these bigger straight flush bits. Just to show you how easy they remove the main pore bits. Okay, let's pop this in now. Start removing the surrounding areas. Right, you can see from that, we've made it all the way around, no problems. It is dusty pine wood, but that's just the way it goes. So I'm happy enough with that for now. We'll have a general tidy up at the end, remember, as always for all my projects. Now I've removed three of the poor prints, marks, whatever. No problem whatsoever. I've left this out for one because I just want to show you another bit that I use sometimes if you are clearing out a lot of area. Now, if you're on a tight budget or you're limit, limited for space, CNC bits and the end milling bits, I would quite happily just use them. Pack of each, and that's all you need to do all the videos, all the projects I've done. However, in the earlier days, before I realised what I was doing, I would just use something like this, and it's called a, a straight flush bit. I think that's one eighth. I think that's the smallest one you could get. And I used to do my lines with that, and all my clear out, and all my older videos as we call it to have found the CNC bits and the end milling bits now straight flush bits you can get a pack of five different ones off eBay for next to nothing seriously they're really cheap cheap and they last a while but you get what you pay for now that thing's far too big that's a good half inch across the top of there you definitely wouldn't use something like that around this lettering that would break off no problem whatsoever however in big areas like this you'll have no problem and you'll definitely feel the difference when that's inside the router. There's a quarter inch shaft on, so no adapter collet required. That would simply just slot straight into your router. The one I'm using now, which I'm gonna show you on this remaining section, the double-sided one like that. You basically have a blade at both sides. We obviously set it to the same depth, and that will clear that out in seconds. Cuts through it like butter. However, you do get a lot of sawdust, not just dust, chunks of wood coming off. That's why we go around with the CNC bit first. You'll notice as we come to the edge, 
it'll pop out really quite aggressive. If you use it on these again, like without repeating myself, you would snap these letters off at the same time. So just be careful what you are using. And just while we're on with router bits, <laughs> I've got to show you this one. This is three inches long. That's a three inch router bit. Seriously, I've tried that in my router. I couldn't even hold it. The vibration was horrendous. I originally purchased this out because I was going to make myself one of those uh, bandsaw boxes. So I had a three inch chunk of wood and I thought I could use this to route out the middle section. My wrists were killing. Absolutely. I don't know who invented these things, but certainly not for our kind of routing work. But that's three inches long, that one. So they do vary in size. And just while I'm on, regards to router bits, you can get yourself a box section like that. And there's all sorts of toys to play. Some of these I've not even touched. I got these for free, so I'm not overly bothered. But there's all sorts on here. Fancy pointers like that. 60 degrees, 90s. These are ideal for going around the edges of wood. They have a little bearing on there, if I can just show you quickly. Movable bearing. And that runs alongside your wood. If you imagine that was a piece of wood there. That runs alongside. And, that, and the curve of that would curve this. Basically the same as what this silver box is. So that's a piece you would use to run alongside your wood. To make that shape. Okay. So there's plenty out there. These little bits I use. They may not be the best. They're certainly the cheapest. I know that for much. And they work for me. So find out what works for you. By all means, don't feel forced to use the bits that I use. Okay, let's just show you quickly with the end flush bit and then we'll get on to the cutting this one out. Right, you can see from that, we've made it the hardest bits over now for me personally. You see now how aggressive those straight flush bits were, but that whipped that out in seconds. I actually did all four of those with the same flush bit. And notice again how these knots are inside the routed out area. We're going to cover all this with resin, remember. So like I said previously, just think ahead and plan out where you're going to pop your template down. Right, I'm going to cut this out first on a scroll saw. If you want to use a band saw, any saw that you've got, basically, I'm sure you'll work around it, as we're going to sand it down afterwards anyway with a mouse sander. I just want to round these edges off slightly. Another option you could have done with this one was to edit more central, if it wasn't for these knots, and you could have routed out the surrounding area and then routed up to a nice square, chunky frame. Because it's a nice piece of chunky wood. So you could have routed out the surrounding area. So that little paw pops out a bit. And then come in to the end. And then just left it square. To leave a nice good solid inch frame all around. That saves you making a frame as well. So you've got plenty of options to, for you. Personally today. We're going to cut this out. Just because I like to cut out things on the scroll saw. <laughs> okay blade wise. Now I've said things before. And I do repeat myself a lot on a lot of my videos. But I try and base them on a beginner that's just turned up to the show and they have no idea what they're doing. And I'm just going to share what little bit of information I know. Now, in regards to scroll saw blades, you get a basic blade, which is a pin blade. They call it a pin blade because obviously it's got a pin at both sides. And you literally just clip that into your more basic swords, the more cheaper swords. Just trying to get the blade the right way around and you clip it in top and bottom take up the tension until you get a nice little ping ping sound you want to feel the teeth want to be feel smooth on the way down and rough on the way up and the blade facing towards you that's for somebody that's new to the scroll saw these are ideal this would cut this one out no problem whatsoever but they're on your more basic saws the only downside is that pin so if you were coming in cutting this out on a scroll saw and you want it to fit in to that letter E, let's say, you wouldn't get that blade in there because those pins would be in the way. Therefore, you'd move on to a pinless blade. Obviously, it's pinless, like so. And they fit into the more fancier, more updated saws. And it's literally a clamp there, a clamp there. Squeeze it together. Take up your tension again. 
same blade at the front, smooth on the way down, rough on the way up. And you drill yourself a little pilot hole. I mean, you can see how small that is. And that will slot in there nicely. And this allows you to do more intricate, detailed cutting. There is different pinless blades. Reverse tooth, some have teeth going halfway down, halfway up. There's all fancy ones out there. That's entirely up to you to find out which one you prefer. Now I've been converted onto what they call spiral blades. You will either love or hate these. Fortunately, on my old drapper saw, I have to use these adapter, adapter clamps. I have no problem with them. They're just a bit of a pain sometimes. Same again, you want it smooth on the way down, rough on the way up. The good thing about spiral blades is they will cut in any direction. So we can literally just start there and just go left to right. And that will saw will go all the way down there along the bottom, pull the wood towards you and we can start cutting up. Push it to the right and we can start cutting around there. I love these spiral blades, really. I have no problem with them. Like I say, there is a lot of haters out there. Whereas if you've got your pin blade, you would have to start there. Let's say you've come in there, cut towards you, and then you're going to have to turn this somehow. Imagine trying to turn this big piece on a wood to go down there. And then you've got to try and turn it again. You know, you're going to be knocking at the back of the saw. You're going to be knocking on your stomach or whatever. So spiral blades, we won't have that issue at all. Okay. Let's set this up on the scroll saw and we'll cut this one out. Right, we've gone all the way around with our scroll saw, as you can see from that. Very dusty, that's just the pine. For me anyway, but you can see from that, we'll give it a nice clean out. We've got our general shape going down there anyway, that's all we're concerned about. Doesn't matter if it's not perfect, that's what sanders are for. When I say sanders, I like to use a little mouse sander on mine. So we're generally just give it a nice skim over basically just get remove the pencil lines that you can see there and we want to round these edges off slightly we don't, we don't need to focus too much on the back piece here because remember it's going to all be covered in resin so the idea is just get these lines a lot more crispier uh, so general tidy up like i say with a mouse sander i also also use a flexi cable on a dremel piece with some of these engraving bits pick a nice one with a nice flat bottom like so and that just fits in there nicely and we'll just to give it a nice clean up and then we'll get on to our next stage of the process Right, that's enough sanding down for me. The nutters have done fine, no problem with those whatsoever. You can see we've just rounded this off slightly, nothing too drastic, but just enough so it's not as sharp as it was before. So now the next stage for me, you could stain this, paint it, do whatever you want to. I'm going to put my boiled linseed on, as always, just to darken this wood back down. Remember, we're only going to see the framework and the actual letters and as always boiled linseed oil and it's just a case of throwing it on really and then we'll leave it overnight to dry and then we'll come back tomorrow and we'll start putting our resin in before that we will spray on some sealant or some description but we'll talk about that at a later stage but for now we'll just literally just throw on our linseed oil like so You'll see how it'll darken that down. Just a matter of getting inside here. 
the resin will fit on top, sit on top, no problem whatsoever. It's more for the sides here. You'll see it's on the sides. Oh, nice and dark. That goes again. Okay, you get the general idea. So I'll literally cover over this. All the lettering. We can just literally just throw this on. Once it's all nicely covered, we'll just get a cloth and just give it a little wipe down. Okay, I'll come back with it all finished. And we've sprayed on our sealant, varnish, or whatever, just before the resin goes in. Right, you can see from that, you can see from that lovely shine that I've sprayed on three or four coats of the Yacht Varnish. That's something new I'm trying out. I'm quite happy with that one. Really does leave a nice finish, as you can see from that. Three or four layers, or sprays, should I say. It's quite enough for what we need. It's an indoor piece, so we don't have to go too over the top. Now, the reason why we spray it on now is because if we were to put all the resin in first and then spray our finish on I did find on a previous project project should I say that all the resin lost its shine just went dull so to play safe we actually finish this now as if it's a finished project we've obviously put our linseed oil on we sprayed our yacht varnish should I say I'm liking this this is my new friend and that's it this project would be finished apart from putting the resin in so we're going to do that now okay resin time i do apologize for the lighting i tried it with the flash on but it's just a little bit too bright and it's later on in the evening i'm just inside the kitchen but we'll see it better in the daylight once it's all set and cured nicely so there we have it our little pause all ready to fill in now with the resin as always for me amazing clear cast resin it comes in two parts, literally A being your resin and B being your adner or your catalyst, I believe it's called. And you mix it by volume, so no scales required. You can literally do an inch, inch and a half of A, inch, inch and a half of B, and literally mix the two together. It does say on the instructions, put the A and B into a third container. I've never bothered. I'll literally just pour B into A, because B flows better than A. Once you mix the two together, we're going to want some colour. I'm just going to do a straight black on all this, because we need to cover these up nicely. There's plenty of different colours out there. Simple eBay specials. There's all sorts, and they're really cheap to purchase. So we have plenty of options to go out. You could do multicoloured stuff in here, and really go crazy. But I'm just going to keep it nice and simple, and just use black. So what I'll do, I'll put the two mixes together, A and B, like I say, and then mix it off camera, and then we'll come back when we're ready to add the colour in. Right, that's our resin nicely mixed up. The good thing about amazing clear cast is you can mix small amounts. So I'd rather mix a couple of little batches than mix in a full container full like that, full plastic beaker cup full, and then basically wasting it unless you have another project lined up. Just a quick one before we put that in. Mixing wise containers, I'll just get these cheap party cups. You get hundreds from next to nothing. The good thing about them is they do have little little grooves on the side so you can count those six of one, six of the other and you know you're gonna get the perfect amount for your resin mix. Plus plastic knife and forks, party pieces. There again, cost next to nothing. The good thing about these are the, the ideal for mixing, plus on the back, they have a little lip there. And that's nice if you just want to scoop a little bit out just to fill in these random letters. So there's no need to go out and buy all the fancy mixing things and all the containers and proper spoons and stuff like that. Okay, there's our resin. Quite a bit in here, but I definitely don't think there'll be enough for this project. 
but we'll get the general idea from our first mix. So we've mixed it in, follow the instructions on your packet, always wear your gloves as you can see. Now this is a dye, these ones, just eBay specials. Now a little bit goes a long way. We want it quite black. Three, four, five, six, seven. Seven little droplets here, and we'll give it a mix round and see how it looks. Coming through nicely there. We're gonna need a little bit more in order to think. I want it, I want it quite a dark black if you know if that makes sense. If you're doing stained glass effect, you wouldn't need so much in, because obviously you want the light to come through the other side. So I've got a couple more little droplets on this one, just to get a nice coloration. Okay, that'd be enough for me. Right, another quick mix about. That's a nice black now. Now it's just a simple case of filling in where we want it. Like I say, inside these letters, we can just scoop a little bit in and drop it straight in. It will find its own level very slowly, so I always get a little cocktail stick just to help it along its way to get inside these tighter areas. Okay, here we go. Let's pop this one in and we'll see what it looks like. You will see it find its own way slowly. So you can either use the back of your spoon just to feed it along its way like so. Like I said, get a cocktail stick and that just help it feed in between those little letters like so. Okay, I'll continue with this because it is a slow process. We'll come back, hopefully, when we're ready to put it to one side. Right, you can see from that, we've got it all in. Now, I don't know if you can see in that, there's lots of little air bubbles in there, look, just see that. So all you need to do now is just get a lighter and skim over the top, like so. You'll actually burn all those air bubbles off. And you just skim over the whole lot like that. You can see them all disappearing. You won't see them on the camera, but you can see them here. And you can do this two or three times to get happy with the end result. We show you a dark one there in comparison to that one over there. Okay, I'll continue with this. Skim over it all, like so. And then we'll put it to one side, we'll come back in 24 hours and hopefully this little project should be finished. Right, that's it. This little project is finished. It's literally 24 hours later. You can see from that, everything's set solid. No problem whatsoever. If I'm going to be a little picky, there may be just a little dot somewhere along there. 
So that's the only thing. Apart from that, everything's fine, all nice and clear. Look, you just see that reflection there. And that's it, we're done. Remember, we've already put on our yacht varnish, our finish. So there's nothing else to do. It's got a nice shine to the resin. And that's it, we're done here. So this is a routed out dog paw with the words Ooh Rescued Ooh. It measured in at 15 inches by 15 inches. It's a good inch thick, inlaid with black resin on recycled pine. Thank you very much for watching.